uh, we found something uh, online just the other day and I want Hi there guys and girls, a um, bit of an update, um, obviously as you probably know I used to drive a lovely little uh, mini John Cooper works um, but obviously as the time has been getting on and I'm getting out a bit older I was finding it harder to get in and out of the, the lovely little low level sports car uh, that it was and um, and so I've uh, been looking for probably about four years uh, for a van, um, something I could turn into a camper one day and uh, we found something uh, online just the other day and I want to introduce it to her. So this is my lovely little VW and uh, as you can see she's about uh, two and a half years old, there's a few little stone marks but uh, very very nice condition, uh, standard alley wheels, uh, I might change those for swamper tyres and swamper wheels. Um, it's only the single side door on the side, however at the back we've got this really cool system by a company called BOT, um, UK manufacturer, never heard of them until um, recently, um, but they've got uh, this drawer system in the bottom which is pretty blooming amazing. Uh, I've got a tailgate obviously, that's what I was really after, and um, obviously we can uh, shelter a little bit if we're cooking, but I'll show you this pot system. So in essence, what I have is these drawers that pull right out, and they come out about four foot, which is pretty damn awesome if you think. So I'm a bit close to the bank, but the other one below pulls out the same. So what I'm thinking of doing is uh, modifying this slightly so that I can um, put uh, like a bit of a, a surface, work surface on there. And then that means when I put on a camping stove um, or you know just a little washing up bowl or something uh, when we're camping, um, I'm going to be able to uh, have somewhere to uh, you know do that. Uh, there's an even bigger drawer here which I'm going to pull out. At the moment, you can see I've got a few bits and bobs in there. I'm not going to pull it all the way because it's not going to hit the stone. But uh, that's got my jackery and it's got my sort of uh, solar panel, a little saw to cut a bit of wood. And what you'll see in the back here, um, I've just invested in, um, it doesn't come with a reversing camera, so I've invested in this um, Autovox uh, wireless reversing camera system. Uh, it's a TW1, for those of you that are interested in that. And uh, it's like a wireless backup camera, but I've bought two. Um, I bought the main kit, which comes with the display, and I've bought the second camera um, because I'm going to put that at the front because there's no parking sensors on the front. There is parking sensors on the rear of this van, but no camera, of course. So um, I've got them charging and um, I'll get those out in a mo and uh, we'll see how quick we can fix this system in place. Uh, but that's going to give me the ability to basically see where I'm going when I'm reversing or even see where I'm parking when I'm coming up front. Um, it's highly recommended. I'm going to put a link in the uh, description below uh, of a, a couple of YouTube videos that I watched to help me decide whether this was the right product. Um, and uh, we'll uh, see you in a moment. So this is the camera. Um, it's uh, uh, got a bracket. It's got a sticky um, pad on the back if you want to stick it. I think I'm going to try and screw it. Uh, and they recommend to charge it up. Um, and when it's charged, it lasts for about 70 something days. Um, in sort of mild weather, perhaps about 58 days, um, you know, when it's colder. Um, but, you know, you can buy a little solar panel attachment um, and I've got mine on charge. I think you can just about see the green light there. That just shows that it, this one's charged up. Hi there. So uh, we're in the cab. Uh, this is a double cab uh, transit. In Europe, it's called a combi uh, or a crew van in some countries. Um, you know, we've got sort of two captain's chairs with um, seats armrests as you can see um, and we've obviously got three seats in the back uh, there's a bulkhead at the moment there with uh, a window which is covered to protect uh, the tools and stop people uh, looking in i may well remove that later on and go with something like the avano switch but for now uh, we're gonna obviously stick with it and see how we get on 
Um, so here's the camera kit. Um, I've got, uh, I've already opened it up. I won't do an unboxing. There's lots of people doing that. So I've got a display here. I've got a charging lead or a power lead. And then these are the caps that go back onto the um, uh, the cameras when, when they finish charging. So <clears throat> I'm kind of lucky enough uh, to have a cigarette lighter socket just here. Um, there is one down the bottom, um, but there's also this little disc when I bought the van and I'm guessing the previous owner may have had uh, some sort of reversing camera himself. So I'm going to basically mount uh, my camera um, when I get um, the stand out somewhere around there. So that's going to look quite cool. So I'll get all the bits out and then we'll see how that looks in a few moments. So um, it was a, everybody talks about fitting this in five minutes. Um, it, <laughs> it probably is if you know exactly where you're going to fit the um, the little uh, um, uh, sub suction mount and, and where you're going to feed the cables to. Um, I suspect realistically it took me about 15 minutes. Um, I've set it up now and um, obviously I'm just going to give you a quick demo. So this is where I fitted the camera, uh, or the sort of the monitor rather, not the camera. Um, uh, the, the little power supply is here. Uh, there's a little button on top for turning it on and off. Uh, there's a, I think there's an auxiliary jack, I'll have to check the instructions. And there's a USB port to charge uh, another device. Uh, the, I was gonna mount it on the little uh, plate at the back there, um, but the problem is, is it's a bit too low down. So I've got it mounted on the dimply surface now. I'm not sure how long it's going to stay there for. I might have to buy one of those little flat discs uh, and glue that in place. Uh, but I've mounted it on a bit of a slope. I don't know if you can kind of see that. Um, it, it, it's on the sort of slopey part uh, here of the, of, of the sort of tray. And that gives it a little bit more height. I can actually see it um, when I'm driving. Uh, obviously, if I need to turn the cameras on. Um, maybe if I'm towing, I might want to turn the camera on to check that the trailer's still there. Um, and, not, and I've got a trailer yet, but that might be something for the future. Um, and um, obviously if I turn the little button on, we can see we're currently uh, uh, getting an image. And that's from this camera down here, which is just behind the steering wheel. Um, and then if I change this button here, we should be able to swap cameras. And then you're going to get a high level view now, which is obviously this camera up here. So they're quite cool. Um, I think the next step is for me to try and find a good spot for them on the number plate. And uh, then we'll see what it's like when we set that up. Uh, but for now, uh, I'm pretty impressed. Yeah, by the way, when I bought these, I didn't really pay much attention. But there, t there appears to be a version 1 camera and a version 2. Uh, now, the version 2's got a little bit of a... A, a, a cutout in the bottom where the cap comes off where there's a version one is just a flat cap um, now the version one camera was having a bit of a job pairing with um, the device on channel one um, so what I did is I swapped the version two camera to, to channel two um, and obviously uh, the camera one paired no problem so I've mounted the camera with the stickies um, uh, one thing I would say, the stickies, there's only one of them in the box. You kind of almost need two because you want, want to stick to the back of the uh, number uh, or where the metal is with the number plate is and want to stick on the number plate. So I've cut mine in half a little bit. You can see I've cut a piece out of here and stuck that on the front piece. And then that's holding it onto the number plate temporarily. Uh, I've lined it up and I'm going to fit the front one back on and see what that looks like. So as you can see, I've stuck uh, <coughs> half the sticky pad on the front uh, part of the plate and uh, the, the the rest of it on the back as you can see yeah when i get out of the sunlight so you can see what i'm doing um so yeah i've stuck it on the back first and i've cut down vertically where the plate or the bracket comes up a little bit higher uh, to hold the camera and then i stuck that bit on uh, this side here um obviously that helps uh, to hold it onto the um, section or the metalwork of the body of the car but at the same time onto the back of the plate so hopefully it shouldn't go anywhere um, when I come to change the number plate and put the private plate back on obviously I'll have to buy some more sticky but for now that'll do um, cool I'll uh, get this second camera fitted and see how it looks so I've uh, decided to mount it um, underneath the number plate uh, simply because we've got uh, a park sense sensor just there and when it was on the top of the, of the number plate obviously it was uh, blocking the park sense sensor so um, 
we'll have to reverse this camera or flip the camera I think it is you need to do in the settings so uh, we'll get onto that next and uh, see how that looks. So uh, a little bit of faffing about uh, but I've managed to uh, line up the front camera uh, as you can see there's a stone on the road and that's kind of just in line with the red arrows and that gives me about a, about a foot foot and a quarter maybe in front and if I hold the, bo the bottom it changes to the rear, rear camera and again there's another stone on the road and that's lined up with the red marks and uh, obviously that's about another foot foot and a half behind yeah, so one thing I had to do is the rear bracket, because I mounted it upside down, um, I didn't quite have enough angle on the camera. Um, you, know, you can only turn it so far. So I've had to take a bit of a pliers and bend the bracket a little bit just to give me a titchy bit more angle. Um, so something to bear in mind um, when you're uh, fitting these things. Obviously, I've marked the bracket a little bit now and scratched the paint. So what I'll do at some point is take it off rub it down, uh, spray a little bit of um, uh, weatherproof paint, black paint on there, matte black, and um, that'll sort that out. Um, and I'll do that when I swap the number plates over, obviously. Um, but yeah, for, I'm pretty pleased with the cameras. Um, obviously, um, they should uh, help me reverse a little bit better and even park up close um, with the front camera. So uh, I'll put some links in the description below, like I said, and. Uh, Hopefully this video has helped um, others to, to, you know, to pick this camera. 15 minutes realistically to set, you know, to fit it, yes, possibly. Uh, to, to fit it correctly, to align it, you're probably looking at an hour, maybe an hour and a half of your time. But even so, there's no wires to run uh, and that's a good thing. Um, you can just charge these things up, um, you know, whenever um, you feel the need, uh, and I think 75 days uh, is what the yeah, the leaflet. We'll 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 monitor that now. Um, we'll see how long that uh, takes to um, to run low. Anyway, thanks again for watching. Um, if you haven't already done so, please give us a a thumbs up, and uh, perhaps give us a subscribe. Um, and if you want to watch more videos, maybe hit the notification bell. That just gives you a, a little bit of a notification of uh, when I've uploaded another video. And uh, yeah, um, we'll leave it there for now. So uh, good night, good day, and good evening wherever you are in the world. Thanks for watching. Bye. Thank you.